Good afternoon. My name is Burtukana Tunkut from Ethiopia. I would like to present on female head farmer household space management strategies, practices, and related impact on human health. Um, Ethiopia is the second most populous country in Africa, and its level depends on rainfall agriculture. However, crop pesticides and weeds are the major problems that are threatening the food production, and smallholder farmers heavily rely on the use of pesticides. Uh, women are, are at, at risk you know, linked to their biological characteristics, lifestyle, and behavior, and also they are literate and they have limited access to information and also the unregulated market. However, most studies focus on male farmers and intervention is mostly focused on changing individual attitudes, behaviors, and choices. Uh, coming to the research questions, we have two research questions. The first one is how can we understand pesticide purchasing and using practices in female head farmers? And what are the conclusions for reorienting to achieve better health and sustainable uh, environment? We adopted the social practice theory that integrates the materials, the competence, and the meanings that enable or coordinate female head household pesticide use practices. The research methods here is a study area which was conducted in three districts of the Amara region and we have collected a lot of data through literature review, household survey, focus group discussion, field observation and key informant interviews with uh, suppliers and extension workers. Uh, here is the focus group discussion with female head householders. And as you see, in, on the left side, a Macy student at Boku, whose name was Roxanne Seawald. She was conducting her research in the same topic with me in Ethiopia. And he's, here's the right side, my supervisor, he was observing the interview situation in, the, in one of the study areas. Uh, and here is also the uh, data that was collected with the key informants, the pesticide retailers, and also uh, we were also observing the field, the farms, how the farms looks like, and here is a household survey with female head households. Uh, coming to the results, pesticide purchasing practices. Uh, here is uh, there were two supply channels, which was informal and formal, and female head households mostly depend on informal channels. This is because informal channels are conveniently accessible in villages. They provide pesticides in smaller quantities, and they provide in a discounted price, and they provide a range of options. Uh, pesticide using practices at pesticide application in female, in female head households undertook in the field, garden, and home. Different pesticides, including DDT and Indosulfan, were used. It was characterized by overdose cocktails and higher frequencies. And here are the pictures, the maize and chat farm, which was burned due to overdoses. Uh, the female head households also store pesticides in traditional grain storage materials, which is made from mud and straw. Uh, this is easily penetrated by uh, the insects. Uh, here is the pictures that shows the different pistas that are attacking their stored grains. And in response to the storage pistas, female hair households use DDT, aluminum phosphide, malatine, and zinc phosphide. Uh, here is a living room where pesticides are mixed and spread. Uh, pesticide application in the room is often made indoor application or inside their house where they live, eat, and sleep. Doors and windows closed during application, and the interview reveals that the food is closed and water smelled of pesticides, and children are, are at risk because of their hand mouth habit, and it also exposes pregnant and breastfeeding mother. Uh, they also mix two or more pesticides, and they also use higher doses than recommended, and even on unrecommended purpose. This is uh, due to the mentioned that pest infestation, pesticide stands, pressure from suppliers, or, and even extension workers are really to pesticides without restriction, limited knowledge and perception, and also limited farm size uh, motivates them to use overdoses and in higher frequencies. They also wear everyday clothes during application because they are put off for protecting clothing and they perceive little risks and uh, protective clothing is not accessible in markets and the social norms that determine men's and women's clothes also affect their protection. Uh, here, uh, a woman was, where, was mixing pesticides with bare hands, and she was also using the pesticides in smaller bottles, which is uh, often by, uh, bought from the informal channels. And here is, she was also spraying without protective clothing. Here, female hair households also, also store pesticides inside their homes, and they also put their pesticides outside the home hanging over the wall. This increases the risk of poisoning because it can be easily accessible 
by children and even the household members. They also dispose the empty containers in different ways. They use for drinking water, they throw away to the field and, and then dump into the toilets that can contaminate human health and the environment. Uh, conclusion, pesticide practice were the outcome of multiple factors rooted in different actors, human farmers, suppliers, extension workers, government and society. Social practice theory informed two major areas of intervention. The first one is improving practices by changing the materials, competency, and meanings. The second one is substitute, substitute practices with, with alternative ones, for example, by introducing organic farming, agricultural farming, integrated pest management, and biopesticides. Uh, thank you for your attention.